In this week's episode, we explore more Oklahoma history and why the historical markers say what they say. And I'll share five great YouTube channels for you to check out. Oh, and if you hear some rumbling in the background, that's just the wind. Yay. <laughs> Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. I've been going around the state for many years visiting as many Oklahoma historical markers as I can. It's been a real pleasure learning all these fascinating bits of Oklahoma's rich history. Many of these historical markers were put up decades ago. Now I'm not sure when the earliest Oklahoma historical marker was placed. In fact, that's something I've been meaning to research. Needless to say, these markers can be quite old. <laughs> it's amazing how many of the green metal signs and small metal placards have survived in actual good condition to today. Some better than others, of course. The restoration and recovery of some of these historical markers that uh, haven't survived so well is a discussion we as a state should be having. But I'm going to table that one for a bit. Now, what I want to talk to you today about is uh, what is told on these historical markers. These old signs you'll find along Oklahoma's highways give you a glimpse at the history they represent. In some cases, they show less than a summary and instead only give you a few select bullet points. The reason is they were trying to give you as much of the important historical information as they could in the small space the sign will allow. Now, some of the more modern, large granite historical monuments provide much more information. They can fit whole paragraphs of history on them, but still they will leave some stuff out for the same reason. Space! <laughs> To put these green metal signs in modern terms, imagine having to describe an historical event on Twitter, and you're only allowed one tweet to do it in. This event you're trying to describe ends up being a few disjointed, poorly structured sentences, or just a headline. Something along the lines of, Washington Irving camped here. Now, that headline does describe quite a bit. But if you have no idea who Washington Irving was, the relevance of this historical marker is lost on you. Now, that was a condensed example. The historical marker would actually say something more along the lines of Washington Irving's camp. Near here, 1832. Washington Irving hunted wild horses, an exciting event described in his book on his Oklahoma tour as Ringing the Wild Horse. Now, that's a bit more descriptive. You now know Washington Irving was an author, when he was here, and what he was doing at this camp. Oh, this is an actual historical marker, by the way. It's a green metal sign put up in 1949 along Route 66 near Arcadia, Oklahoma. So you now know a little more of the history of this particular location. But again, if you have no idea who Washington Irving was, what book they are talking about, or even why he was in Oklahoma Territory in the first place, you're still kind of lost on the why it was important enough for a marker. Now, way back in 1949, you could have taken a picture of this historical marker, so you could remind yourself to research this later. But uh, you're not going to see that picture again for a while. Of course, you'll have to wait until you got home. You'll have to wait until you finish the roll of film. Hey, you don't waste film. <laughs> and after that, you'll run down to the drugstore, I'm assuming, um, drop off your film, and then come back in a few weeks when your pictures were finally developed. 
Now, assuming your pictures turned out, you still have to do your research. And that meant going down to your local library, dig through the card catalog, and maybe, just maybe, your library had a book on or by Washington Irving. Now today, I can magically say, Hey Google, who was Washington Irving? According to Wikipedia, Washington Irving was an American short story writer, essayist, biographer, historian, and diplomat of the early 19th century. And I could also easily find out that the book was called A Tour on the Prairies. It was published in 1835, is in the public domain, so you can go online, download it, and read it at your leisure. Oh, and look for chapter 25. So hopefully now you understand why some of these older historical markers don't give you the full history. They will often leave a lot out, and I do mean a lot. There are even historical markers out there that just note the location of a building or a town site, and they don't go into a whole lot more. A good example would be the small markers that note the stops along the Butterfield Overland Mail Route. This was a stagecoach and mail route in the 1850s that cut across southeastern Indian Territory from about uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas down to Colbert's Ferry on the Red River. These are small markers. They're basically a short concrete block with, it's, are, that are just a few feet high and they have a metal plaque on them. Um, these were put up along this historic route in 1958. On a side note, these particular kind of markers are really hard to find. They are small enough they're hidden by the tall grass. And they're mostly site-based, meaning you don't find them along the highways like the green metal signs. They're often found on private property, and some of these markers are just lost to time. If you want to see an example of this type of marker and visit one along the Butterfield Overland Mail Route, there's one in the Boggy Depot Park near Atoka, Oklahoma. So, as I was trying to express, these markers only give you a touch of the history they represent. They are bookmarks in the big book of Oklahoma history left for you so you can finish reading. And I encourage you to look at the stories and dig deeper. We are in the information age. Learning more about Oklahoma history, about human history, is much easier now than it was for the people who put up that green metal sign for you all those decades ago. We know more now. The stories have been added too. We're including more. We're hearing the other side of the story. You'll find Oklahoma's history is full of wonder and adventure, heartache and sorrow, and acts of heroism. You'll read about our best and our worst, and you'll learn from the mistakes that were made. That's what this exploration of Oklahoma history does. We learn from the past for a better future. Yeah, I know, that's kind of cheesy. What can I say? I'm passionate about this. So the next time you see one of those tall granite monuments or green metal signs along the highway, stop. Give it a read, <laughs> and you'll start to wonder about what it says. Then, just pull out your phone and ask Google, Siri, or Cortana, Hey, tell me more. If you would like to explore more Oklahoma history, please check out our sister site at Exploring Oklahoma History at blogoklahoma.us. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is, tell about the last time you found an Oklahoma historical marker. I look forward to reading it. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the WebRing and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. Here are five more YouTube channels that I really enjoy that I think you should check out. Number five, only level one. Number four, the 8-bit guy. Number three, lazy game reviews. Number two, Steven Larson. 
And number one, The Film Theorist. I'll have a links to all these channels in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. Oh, and don't forget to follow Blog Oklahoma on YouTube, too. <laughs> okay. Um, I really hate to do this to you. But there will be no new episode next week. <laughs> I know. I just came back and everything. Unfortunately, I need to take care of something next weekend, and I just won't be able to record. So, uh, there's that. <laughs> uh, the good news is, um, I'm trying to get on a better schedule on doing these podcasts by working on two scripts a week. That way, as I'm finishing up one, i am already started work on the following week's episode. Hopefully, this uh, system's going to work out a little better for me. That way, I can keep the topics flowing, and if I have an idea, I can just write it down and start running with it immediately as I'm finishing up another episode. So, uh, let's hope that works out. <laughs> hey, if you have any suggestions on script writing and topics, or if you have a suggestion for a topic you'd like me to cover, please feel free to contact me anytime. Um, be sure to follow Blog Oklahoma on all social media. We're Blog Oklahoma, one word, just about everywhere. So just look. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram. You get the picture. Um, I share updates on Blog Oklahoma, and I share all sorts of fascinating news articles, especially tech-related news articles, and a lot of fun stuff, too. So please, Check us out on social media if you haven't followed us already. And again, keep the feedback and suggestions coming. I always look forward to hearing from you. Well, that'll do it for today. I got a few more things to cover here in the podcast, but uh, I'll be back the following week with an all-new episode of the Blog Oklahoma podcast. Thank you. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? Of course you did. I mentioned it last week. Oh, wait, you're new here? Sorry. <laughs> hey, we have our own cafe press store. There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please just head on over to cafepress.com slash Blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist. There is now well over. 17 hours of music for you to enjoy. So please, go over to Spotify, click on the playlist, click on random, and enjoy. I'll have a links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma Podcast. I'm happy to announce as of January 22nd, 2017, Blog Oklahoma has 917 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Hooray! Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.